Hi, everybody. I think I'm live or very close to being live. Yes, I am. Welcome. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you to those of you who've been very extra patient because I had a false start. But now we're on. So I titled this video, 2020, the year when everything changed. And I don't think there's a person on this planet, well, let's say I don't think there are many people on this planet now who've not awakened to a different reality, to something different. Whether it's your finances that have changed, whether you've become aware of the climate changes, whatever it is that's happening in your world, chances are you're much more aware now that something's happening to us globally. About five years ago, because as astrologers, we're always, we're always looking in advance. We're always looking, well, you know, what do the aspects show five years ahead, 10 years ahead? And about five years ago, I uh, was looking at the aspects for 2020. And I couldn't believe it. It was like, oh my goodness. All this is coming up in 2020. Saturn and Pluto conjunct, one pass. Usually it goes there and back, Saturn two or three times, just once. Mars and Venus retrograde, the eclipses, the squares, the Saturn and Jupiter uh, at zero degrees of Aquarius ends of cycles, beginnings of cycles, transformational energies. And I posted a video in 2016, which I think has had about a half a million views about the potentials for 2020. Did I get that there was gonna be a pandemic? No. Did I get the specifics? Mm, not the specifics, but certainly the economy, the transformation and the fact that things looked as though they were going to become global, looked as though things were just going to be changing so much so I can remember writing that we may look at 2020 as the time when we reset our calendars, when we reset our world, we may look back at the years before 2020 and say, well, that was one era. And from 2020 started a new era. And whilst I agree with you, Whitney Cole, thank you for commenting every century or so there's a global change, religiously, politically, environmentally, we do con constantly evolve. The one thing that I would say here that is different or seems to me to be different is that there is a global awakening happening now. There were wars that went on, there were things that went on where parts of the planet were not so involved, were not so affected. But now this is different from the perspective I'm seeing it, in that this is our world. There is no escaping it. There is no getting away from these transformations. So that's how I see this now. So here we are, we're in September, and a lot of people are asking me, they're saying, gosh, what else is gonna happen in 2020? Well, the astrology for sure is pretty powerful with the Mars retrograde still, with a powerful new moon in Libra, making a cardinal cross energy coming up on October the 16th. 
and there's a lot what with the the elections in the United States with the climate changes there's so many heartbreaks going on on, on our planet as well as the wonderful possibilities we can't help but see how many of our brothers and sisters are suffering sicknesses. Thank you very much, Elma. I appreciate you. Suffering health challenges, climate changes, economy changes, social changes, political changes, changes to our educational system. This is a global call. And I speak to you today on the eve of the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah coming up, 5781, I do believe it is. And it's seen by the Jewish population as the birthday, the New Year for the whole of the planet. And we're deep in prayers for this next couple of days, or actually for the next 10 days. It's a time of atonement, at one moment. How, how do we come together? It's a time of going within, deeply within, and a time of reflecting, again, Mars retrograde, reflecting upon the ego, reflecting upon the I, me, 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 and seeing that what happens in one place affects the rest of the world. And that we together, if we'll come together, if we will come together, the call is to come together. That is the call now. Not to run off in a cave somewhere and hope that you can survive it away from people. Maybe you will. But look, there are people in America hundreds of miles away from the terrible fires and their air quality has been affected. One child got COVID in a school. The, the children are going back to school now, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. One child got COVID, a thousand children were sent home. We're all one big family. And educationally, we've got to teach ourselves because the North Node is in Gemini. This is about working with our mind and working with our speech and working with our thoughts. Thank you very much, Amanda May, thank you. And working with individually. Thank you very much, Steve, appreciate you. Working on the individual level, internally, and working together globally, but seeing that every little thing that you do makes a difference. Everything. From the way that you prepare your food, from the way that you thank, give thanks for all the things that you have in your life, the people, the gift of eyesight, the gift of hearing. So many gifts we've got. And the consciousness that you bring, this Gemini North Node for the next year and a half, the North Node is what we're moving to collectively, as a collective. And this North Node is about what can we learn? What must we learn? from these challenges, these difficulties. And how do we need to educate ourselves differently? And how do we need to educate our children and our young ones? Because many schools are gonna be closed and they might go back for a while and then close again. But most things for a while at least are gonna be online. And online, at least, we can't infect each other with negative thoughts, with negative thinkings, with viruses. But we can begin to infect one another with loving kindness, with a different kind of energy, and learn 
how to be kind to one another, not to harm one another. It's a learning process. We, have, we haven't been trained in that way. I was only listening uh, to uh, um, a couple of Kabbalists talking. Sorry, I don't remember their names. I will get Lucy to post it when I remember their names. Um, but one was giving an example. He's a musician, a guitarist. And in the same building he lived in was another guitarist. And they were a little bit competitive from each other. And one got a good gig. The other one would feel a bit put out. And then the other one got a good gig, a better gig. And then this one guitarist was saying, the one who got the better gig got fired. And he said he was ashamed to say he felt glad that this other guitarist got fired because it meant that he was the top dog. So it's almost like we've been trained to be pleased when somebody fails, when somebody's less good than we are. It's the ego, it's the ego energy. And I'm not, how can I say, you know, I felt it myself on occasion, of course, and we need a different training. We've got to have a different educational system that evolves as we begin to evolve. Since the pandemic, Caroline Meiss, I was listening to one of her videos, very inspirational, I find her. She said that the word prayer since the pandemic, Google searches have more than doubled. So people are seeking, we are seeking for something more. There is a search now. What is the meaning of life? I can't tell you the number of clients who are asking me now, what's my path? Am I on the right path? What am I not seeing? What do my aspects show? Because somebody's chart certainly does show the potentials, the raw potentials, what's there? What might be unexplored? And yes, you can transcend your chart. Yes, you can. And the way we transcend all of it, although maybe not quite all of it because we are still going to have certain strengths that one brings to the table. One's good at mathematics, one's good at music, one's good at speaking, one's good at healing. And yes, you may have a number of talents, but the idea is that we live in a world that is safe, where all these talents can be brought out. Uranus is in Taurus until 2025. Taurus, our gifts, our talents. Yes, it runs our financial system. So we're getting the shake up to our finances, sure. But it also rules our gifts, our talents. A talent, I think, used to be a word for a gold coin or a, something that was valuable. Your talents are valuable. And it's time for a shake up of those talents, to bring them out, to find more that you can express. You may suddenly find something you didn't know you had. So since it is the Jewish New Year, according to Kabbalah, we're all part of one soul. We're all part of the same soul. And I would put it that we're all part of one family. But we're actually like flowers in the wind, yeah? When the wind comes along, the flowers go in the same direction. You don't see some of the flowers going one direction and some going in another direction when the wind is coming from the north. They'll all go in that one direction together. And can you imagine what a world we would have 
if we set the intention to work together. I mean, that, that is the direction we're going. So what is the meaning of life? According to Kabbalists, when 10% or more of humanity awakens to the desire, the deep call for why am I here? What am I doing here? What is my purpose? What is my life about? Then we begin to change the consciousness of the planet. That's what it takes. That's the shift. Yet like birds, thank you, Yoga Lotus, like birds coming together, they fly together, don't they, in a direction. You don't see three of them going off and saying, no, I'm not going that way. Sorry, folks. I want to do it my way. And I'm going to bring up a really sore topic, but I don't care. I'm going to do it because I want to illustrate something through it. And I'm not going to stay away from things that are hot topics just because it might make me, my ego, unpopular. So I'm going to talk about masks, <laughs> the dreaded masks. I um, thank you, Noya Erda. We are the light. Yes, we are. Got to express that. And somehow the bigger the contrast is, the bigger the problems, the bigger the challenges, the more we have that benefit of contrast, which is what Abraham talks about. You get this rocket of desire that you want something different. So we're getting a great benefit of contrast at the moment, huge. The darker things get, the more evil things get, the more we're being shown what do you really want? What's the desire here? So are you, my dear soul family, searching for more meaning in your life? Is that what you're looking for now? Are you looking for something more than just being robotic and being the conditioned being that you've been? robotically taught yeah what's the conditioned part of you that's just behaving on this um, line that you've been blinkered to believe that is the only way what can you open up to yep the evil is being unmasked thank you sunny girl yeah we're discovering what we really need and what we really don't need. What are we putting our energy into? What are you putting your time into? We just had this new moon in Virgo. It's about a re-evaluation of your time, your daily habits. Great, AK, your soul is screaming to return to balance on this physical plane. Great, woohoo! Thank you, Janet. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm talking about these masks. So um, I went to Austria yesterday. I got on a plane for one day, actually. I had to get some important um, documents. So I had to wear a mask. I have to say I was a little afraid about going, but it seemed that this was the only way to do it. There was nobody that could do it for me. So... I had the experience of wearing a mask almost two days pretty solid, pretty solidly. And what was it like? So I'm aware there is tremendous resistance by many to the masks. There are many who feel as though it's great. And yes, let's wear masks if it means we can protect ourselves and protect one another. Let's do it. But there are many who really don't want these masks. And I'm not getting into who's right or wrong. I'm, no way. I'm just looking at what's the situation now. So what did I notice about wearing a mask? Well, I noticed that I, 
it was a much more internal experience. You speak a lot less. It takes a lot more effort to speak when you're wearing a mask. When you've got nothing in front of your nose and your mouth. I noticed that I had to concentrate a lot more on what somebody was saying because I couldn't, I couldn't read facial uh, characteristics. Thank you, Lanetta. Thank you. I couldn't read what somebody was saying. I thought it was hilarious when I presented my passport and boarding pass. She said, please take your mask off and your sunglasses off so we can see whether it's you or not. So I noticed that it, it took me into my internal world. I became much more aware of my breathing, my breath. I became aware of how thankful I am for every breath. I found it easier to meditate on the breath with a mask on, believe it or not. And yes, Janet, you feel like you're being silenced. Yeah, it was this experience of being silenced. I had to really concentrate on what somebody was saying to me. I had to really listen more carefully. It was like having one of my senses, two of the senses almost. The smelling, you couldn't smell stuff with a mask on, much more difficult. And tasting, you can't eat with a mask on can't drink with a mask on, so it's like having two senses taking away. Thank you. Yes, Ali, in, in Asia, you've been wearing masks for years. It's not a big deal. You can smile with your eyes. Thank you. But to those of us who are new, you've got these two senses that have suddenly muted. And the other senses become more awakened. It's like, hmm. I noticed that I'm, in, since I was going to use a lot of energy speaking, especially on an aeroplane, I chose my words really carefully. And with the, with the North Node in Gemini, this is about choosing your words really carefully. Carefully. Thinking before you're speaking. Thinking before you're thinking. <laughs> um, so, do I like wearing masks? Not particularly. But if that's the law and if that's the regulation, I'm not going to get into a fight about it. And I'm going to try to find what's of benefit here. What can I learn from this? The North Node in Gemini. What can I learn from this unpleasant experience? Yep, for those of you who read lips, it does cut off a third sense. Absolutely, Janet, yep. And yeah, in Victoria, there's a fine of $1,600. So, okay, so I would say, right, if you're gonna be fined, you've got to you're gonna have to conform to the law of the land. Like it or not like it. And the ego, the Mars retrograde, you know, it's an opportunity to look at our, Ego, what is it about me, me, me? If there's a chance that by putting a mask on, I can prevent an infection to somebody else, isn't that worth it? If there's a chance by wearing a mask, I'm also protecting myself and my loved ones. So, and I noticed it while, fly, while flying, you know, most people were, were fine. But there were people on that plane who absolutely in the middle of the flight, they just took the masks off and started to talk between the aisles. I noticed I felt the rage come up in me. It was like, fuck, excuse me, guys. Why do, why, do, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to swear but that's how I felt. It was like, all of us here, you know, this is a regulation, let's work together. And in the end, I called the air hostess. I said, look, 
this is a, a legal regulation, is it not? She said, absolutely. And she sorted it out. But once again, half an hour later, off came the masks. It's this belligerent. And yet, I know there are all kinds of arguments. Wearing a mask might make you sick with bacteria. But they've been in Asia. People have been wearing masks for a couple of years now. And I don't know that people have gotten so sick from them. You know, there's, there's, there's always going to be arguments. But what I'm trying to make here is the point that if this now is a law and we now work together with it, just let's work together. Let's explore working together with something simple. This is not a difficult thing to do, to wear a mask. I would imagine it was much more difficult in the time of the World War where people had to wear gas masks when their lives really were threatened. This could be a walk in the park, but no. We've, you know, and we've got a full moon coming up in Aries. That's going to be the next moon energy, guys. The next moon energy is a full moon in Aries along with Mars retrograde in Aries. We're going to see this ego thing really come out strongly. And I notice mine, it's, you know, it's about becoming aware. I'm far from perfect. I want to learn how to, how to rise above this thinking ego that is not for the good of all. Even just driving home tonight, you know, I was letting somebody in and I was gladly letting the first one in. But when the second one came in, I was not happy. <laughs> I noticed, hey, hey. Yeah, I mean, thank goodness I became aware of it and I almost graciously let him in. I mean, he was in anyway. It was just, that was it. He needed to go. So, where are we? That ego, it is the death of the more, more, more ego. Me, 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 me. And that isn't to say that you haven't got to look after yourself and that you're not responsible for yourself and your well being and eating well and doing all the things you need to do. But to me, the mask is about learning not to speak until I can speak kindly. And if I'm, there's a chance that I might not speak or think kindly towards you, better I wear a mask. Better I become a little uncomfortable. And it's uncomfortable, yeah. There has to be a certain discomfort for the awakening to happen. Now, the choice now, as, I can, as far as I can see astrologically here, is how, yes, ego is good and bad. You're right. That's why I was pointing out we do need an ego. But this harming one another ego and not working together ego and not cooperating and China against Russia and against the United States and nations against nations and peoples against peoples and religions against religions. This is what is, um, has to transform. Yeah. But we've got a unique opportunity here with our gift of the internet that as a family here we can choose to create the frequency of loving kindness of training ourselves to become loving in our thinking to become aware becca i hear you you see the mask as the first step in taking our freedoms away Maybe some of our freedoms need to go. Maybe this is just a warning sign that all the freedoms we've had to go in different directions. I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to do it this way. 
instead of how can we begin to think of ways of coming together. Diane, I hear you, your daughter's special needs. I hear you, I hear you. And there will be those who can't do it. I hear you. I'm just talking about the majority and the people who are just saying up yours, I'm not gonna do it. And it's just to observe. Yeah, we, we need a full outfit. Yeah, why just the nose and the, and the mouth? It's just an opportunity for an observation time. A mask is just one part of this transformation, as I see it. I'm not saying I'm right, but what I'm saying is, I think we have to see a bigger picture. We have to see something. It's a bit like, you know, let's get a vaccine for the COVID-19 let's vaccinate and let's put it behind us and let's get on with our lives. No, that's not gonna happen. 2020 is the pivotal year. 2025 is another one, astrologically. I'm gonna do a video and I'm gonna do a workshop on 2025 because that is, I've talked about that in my seminar highlights. I did a seminar 2020 to 2030, which you can get. And 2025 is that year where we, we, which way are the scales going? So we can choose now. While the blows are pretty heavy. To make the changes within and together. And I've no doubt for you online here with me, most of you, you, you want this, you feel this. You want to have a purpose and a meaning to your life. You want to feel as though you're creating a world that is peaceful, that is kind, that is loving, where health is a given, where we don't have all these diseases, where we have food that is grown energetically in harmony with our planet, where we look at our earth with love and treat her with love and respect and treat one another with respect. So astrologically, it looks as though there is certainly the potential for things to hotten up and to get more polarized. Much more polarized. But in that comes this tremendous opportunity for us to set a new intention now, to set new intentions of what it is that we want to create together. Loving thoughts, infections of love, infections of kindness, infections of healing, infections of good health. Imagine if we only thought good thoughts to one another. Imagine if we were only loving to every single person that we think about and meet. Imagine the frequencies that we'd be operating at. At the moment, we, we operate at a very dense frequency. It's dense, it's like, you did this, no, you did that. We, no, they're doing this to us and they're doing that to us. Ultimately, we're one family. Easy, no. Easier together with more of us, yeah. Easier together as we do this together, yeah. And you're stronger than you think. It's a bit like a tea bag when you put it into a, uh, a cup. You don't know till you put water on it quite how strong it's gonna be. So we're strong, we can be resilient, but the direction is together. And in the spirit of this new year that comes up for the Jewish people, um, I, my new website has been launched. Uh, I encourage you to visit that. I'm, I've launched the digital paintings because so many of you love the paintings with the Pleiadians, their channel paintings. 
and um, it's just a blanket price of $30 for any of the digital paintings that you'll see online. I wanted to make it accessible to everybody and um, I hope that that may be of interest to some of you rather than shipping them. You can make your own print, you can get your own canvas and have those frequencies and vibrations close to you. So I think that this is a rise to a new spiritual awakening. We're coming into this highest peak now for humanity. So that instead of behaving against nature, I mean, if you look at all of nature, the animals, the food, the trees, everything works together. They work as a whole system. It's only human beings, I won't say all, but many who are working against the system, against the system, instead of working with it. And so if we have to be restricted and we have to be restrained at the moment, restrained from hurting one another, restrained from coming too close to one another, restricted in our freedoms, sat in square Uranus, oh my goodness, for this coming year. So there's going to be a lot about my freedom, what is freedom, what is freedom of choice, and where do we need to work together, learn how to work together. It's a learning curve. So this is the awakening from the perspective I see it astrologically. And so I just want to thank Lucy so, so much. She is wonderful. Thank you, Lucy, for being online today. Thank you, Drew, for being here. I have wonderful moderators. They bring you all together. They help this to come together. And I just want to say to you, I'm on that learning curve with you. Right on it, every day, every moment, trying to refine my thinking, trying to refine my intention of being kind and thoughtful and considerate to you, my family, all of you. Not just blood family, although I don't have very many blood family. So I'm very lucky to have beautiful friends and a beautiful online family. My beautiful online family, thank you for your support. Thank you for liking the video. The more that you like the video, the more of our family can join us. We can get beyond that 10% critical point and really raise the consciousness, the frequency of our planet. And the fact is that we are, in many ways, you know, I look at this whole thing about enslavement, we're being slaves. We just got to get in tune with nature. And nature and the higher power is going to keep bashing us until we get it. And it's not very pleasant to be bashed and battered and hit by hurricanes and cyclones and fires and infections and economic crisis and political and all these things but these systems have not been healthy we've been raping our planet the soil has lost all its nutrients in many places but we are an inventive species there are those on our planet now who are creating ways to make the topsoil fertile again who are creating new ways of uh, traveling without harming our environment. We are creative and the more that we work together, the more we'll find all the solutions that we need. So I'd just like to say a prayer for our brothers and sisters who are hurting right now, those who are really suffering, let our hearts go out to those people 
see ourselves as being connected to them and giving them love and energy and healing. Patricia is going to go and sit in the grass and ask Gaia for healing energy. Beautiful. So, yeah, there's a breaking down happening, but an opportunity to really build something amazing. These are transformational times, and I thank you for being with me on this journey together. Much, much love to you. Thank you, S. Murdoch. Thank you again for all your consistent support. Much love. Thank you.